everybody, I'm Karen and I'm finally back with a brand new DIY video. So if you're new here and you haven't heard, I recently started a brand new YouTube channel just for my jigsaw puzzle videos. I'm going to be doing time lapses, reviews, oddly satisfying types of videos. All of those puzzle videos are now going to live over on the new channel and I'll be able to keep this channel just for DIY videos. So to celebrate that, today I'm going to be doing a DIY project that uses jigsaw puzzle pieces. Trigger alert, if you don't want to see me cut up and destroy a jigsaw puzzle, this might not be the video for you. But luckily I have lots of videos over on my new channel where I don't destroy jigsaw puzzles. So today I'm going to be using puzzle pieces to make decorative letters in two different ways. And I had a lot of almost craft fails with these projects. So I'm going to be sharing a bunch of stuff that didn't work as well as the things that did. So let's get started. This first one is the perfect project to do if most of the puzzle is intact and you're just missing a few pieces. Print out a pattern. I'm doing an ampersand, of course. Cut it out and trace it onto a piece of cardboard like a cereal box. Then cut that out too. Now place it on top of the puzzle and separate out a section of the puzzle that's the same size as your shape. Flip it over and then use glue to completely cover your cardboard shape. Now here is what I should have done differently. You really want to make sure that the entire letter is covered with glue, including all of the edges, which I didn't really do. So if you're doing this, please use more glue than I did and make sure to go all the way to the edges. It'll make it a lot easier later. Press that onto the puzzle and put something heavy on top while it dries. Then remove all of the extra puzzle pieces. Now use a sharp craft knife to carefully cut around your shape right through the jigsaw puzzle. The reason why you really need to glue down the edges is because if you don't, you might lose some small pieces like I did here. But I just went in with a little more glue to put it back on. The next thing that I did wrong is that I had the idea that if I glued the front with Mod Podge, it would help the pieces stick together more. Well, what that actually did was just fill in the gaps between the pieces so that when I painted it later on, it looked much more flat and I lost that nice edge between each of the pieces, so I would not recommend doing this step. Once you've cut out the entire shape, bring it outside and give it a few light coats of spray paint. Once that's dry, you can use colorful paint to add some color. <laughs> you could paint the whole thing, but I decided to just paint the outlines of all of the pieces. To make a gradient, paint the very top and the middle, and then mix up an in-between color to paint that section in between them. And that's it. You could make any shape or any letter that you want and use them to decorate a gallery wall or hang it on your door, anything that you can think of. Next, we're going to start with a cardboard letter, which you can get at any craft store. I already painted mine white, and then I went in with the same colors as before to paint a gradient onto it. I also tried painting the puzzle pieces, 
However, when I painted them like this, it took so many coats to get an even coverage that it was just such a waste of paint. And afterwards, they all ended up being stuck to the paper, so I couldn't even use them. Instead, I grabbed some other pieces from the puzzle and I flipped them over so that the white backing was facing up. Then I used scissors to cut them to size before gluing them onto the letter. That way I could arrange them exactly how I wanted and use just normal school glue to glue them into place. Now, to be totally honest, I probably should have just stopped here since I actually really like how the white pieces look on top of the gradient. But no, instead I decided to cover all of the sides with puzzle pieces as well. And then I used the same paint colors as before to paint over them so that the entire thing was a gradient. And that's where I ended up. I think this is such a fun decoration for anyone who loves puzzles, and it would be a fun project to do over the summer if you're really bored and you need a project that takes all day long. I love these ideas for using old puzzles that are missing some pieces and otherwise would have just been thrown away. Now we can actually make something cute out of them. So I hope you guys liked these project ideas. I really hope you'll go over to my new Jigsaw Puzzle channel and subscribe over there. I'm trying to get my watch time up over there so that I can get the monetization turned on. So if you have ever wanted to support me in a way that is totally free, Going over there and watching all the videos and telling your friends about them would be the best gift that you could give me. Also, I want to give a big thank you to Seiko Puzzles for providing the puzzle that I used in today's video. They do a lot of Disney puzzles, if that's your thing, so I'm going to link them right down below. So if you're watching all the way to the end of the video, I want you to tell me in a comment that you are part of the Jigsaw Squad. I mean, this is the most exclusive group in town, so if you're here, you are just the coolest. All right, I'll see you all next time. Mm -hmm.